Welcome everyone to Couch Potato Diary, part two today, as we wrap up our NFL previews looking at the AFC. We will give win totals for every team um, across the AFC, and then at the end of the show, Super Bowl picks for the upcoming year. So, thank you all so much for tuning in. Let's get into it. It's time for AFC win totals. Uh, we begin in the AFC East. It is the Buffalo Bills. Uh, their total sits at 10 and a half. Um, they are plus 160 to win the division, plus 750 to win the AFC. I had them as uh, an overvalued team this season. Um, I think that with Milano hurt on the defensive side, there is great concern about this team. Um, I think when you look at the teams that they faced last year, uh, Warren Sharp, again, providing most of the stats uh, with his book. Uh, amazing. I absolutely recommend going out and buying it and, and downloading it. Uh, the Bills faced these quarterbacks last year. Zach Wilson, Jimmy Garoppolo, Sam Howell, Terod Taylor, Mac Jones, Tim Boyle, Easton Stick, Billy Zappi, and Russell Wilson. In 2024, the slate of quarterbacks are projected to be a top 10 um, that the, the slate of quarterbacks that the Bills are expected to face. They all have, um, they have a, a number of high-level players who left this defense, and now Milano isn't going to be there. Um, and so I think there is just real concern about what this team is going to be defensively. And I think that there is um, a, a real, a, a real um, lack of, star power and skill, quite frankly, on the offensive side as well, aside from um, Josh Allen and, quite frankly, James Cook. Um, the, the offensive line, I think, is a little bit of a concern as well. I, I just, the only reason you could buy into Buffalo this year is because Josh Allen is awesome. And Josh Allen is absolutely awesome, but I, I, I think that this is expecting a level of awesomeness from him that is just not there. Um, and so I am going to go under 10 and a half on the Buffalo Bills, and quickly looking at it, the Bills to miss the playoffs uh, is plus one forty. Let, let's um, let's just write that one down. And keep keep it off to the side. We'll see uh, about the the playoff teams. It's a really really good conference, as you all know. Uh, the Miami Dolphins at nine and a half. Um, they are plus two fifteen to win the division. I had them as an undervalued team. They well, we know the issues. They absolutely struggled against playoff teams last year. Uh, they were 1-5. The Dolphins are now expected to face 10 teams that finished over 500 in 2023. Nine of those are... Um, nine of those are projected to do that this year. Um, they do face the easiest projected... The, the eighth easiest projected schedule in the league. Um, and, and so they, they face a lot of good teams, but they face a lot of bad teams as well. It is kind of all over the place a little bit. I do think that people are forgetting how good this team was at the start of the year. It all fell apart. And some of the, the, the players that were hurt then are still hurt now. And so that is concerning on the defensive side. But when the injuries came up, this team felt like a lock to win the division. They were locked in, um, but they needed their big collapse and a huge turnaround from the Buffalo Bills to make their way into um to, to to make their way into this being a uh, a team that didn't win the division and had to go out on the road an abysmal playoff game everyone remembered that but this is still an offense that pushed the ball downfield a little bit more this is still an offense that um has Tyreek Hill has Devon Achan in another year has Raheem Mostert who is still very good Jalen Waddle it's like the, the third fastest guy on the team and would be the fastest guy on most teams and I think Tua is still very good at getting the ball out very very quickly and so yes the offensive line is a bit of a concern but I do think that the way this offense is set up they can still get big plays off of it I I I'm aware like looking at um, go, going back and when we did the, the, the stuff I'm worried I'm wrong about episode, Miami was tops at that list. Cause I, I know there is absolutely a, a part of this where it just doesn't work. The offensive line gives to a no time to get the ball downfield. He's not able to get the ball to his weapons. The offense looks ugly. The defense is just a sieve that gets picked through. And this team gets just whooped on by teams that finished above 500 last year, even though they have the eighth projected, uh, eighth easiest projected schedule in the league. 
I know there are a lot of ways this goes wrong, but I just, just have to, I, I just believe in the talent of this team. So I'm going over nine and a half, um, and I'm going at plus 215 to win this division. Um, after that, uh, we have New England. Their total is at four and a half. They are plus two seven, uh, 2,700 to win the division. I don't know how you can assume this team is going to do anything this year. The offensive line is so bad, they don't even trust to put their newly drafted quarterback back there. They have no one for Jacoby Brissett to throw the ball to. Defensively, Matthew Judon is gone. Um, I, I, I just think this is going to be a really, really bad football team. Over four and a half, not a chance. Five wins for this group? No. I think New England has a better chance of finishing with the worst record in the league. Um, so I'm going under four and a half on New England, and that is one that we will circle as well. They face the second uh, hardest projected schedule in the NFL. And then we get to the New York Jets. Their total is at ten and a half. Um, I have them as overvalued. Uh, they were plus 170 to win the division. I... I want to hate this team more than I do. And it is all because of Aaron Rodgers. Last year, we were very anti-Jets because of Aaron Rodgers. And not just the whole who he is thing. But I thought he was looking cooked his last year in Green Bay. And so I thought going into last year, he was going to be done, done. N then he gets the injury. And now we are presuming that he comes back and helps lead this team to the promised land. I just don't think so. But... It is such a good football team, except for him. Like, you look at what they did to some high-level quarterbacks last year. They held C.J. Stroud to four yards an attempt. In all other games, he averaged 8.4. They held Dak Prescott to 5.8 yards an attempt. All other games, he averaged 7.7. .7. They held Josh Allen. You hear where I'm going with this? Allen, Hurts, Mahomes, Prescott, Stroud, all significantly or relatively. Um, the, the Mahomes one, it's a two yard drop but uh or a 0.2 yard drop but still all of these quarterbacks high level quarterbacks they had played those guys had their worst games of the year against the new york jets robert sala can coach the fuck out of a defense man i will tell you that and they got amazing defensive players they also are projected to have the fourth easiest schedule of opponents in the league this year i'm not going to go over on them but i do think that this is a team that makes the playoffs so i'm going to say under 10 and a half but make the playoffs. So we are walking a very fine line with this team. There's a, a sweet spot that we can get with this group. Um, but I think we can get there. And I think that, uh, I think we can do it with this team. Uh, moving on to the AFC North. The Baltimore Ravens. Ten and a half uh, is the win total. They are plus 145 to win the division. Plus 550 to win the AFC. And plus 1200 to win the Super Bowl. Um, they had... Um, that they had three starters in the offensive line leave. They have Mike McDonald, who was the defensive coordinator, and I thought got a, a great bit out of this team, gone as well. Um, and so that is a real concern. Patrick Queen, who I think is the biggest addition to any team in the NFL this year, which has to mean it's the biggest subtraction from any team in the NFL. He is on his way out. Um, but this is a murderer's row to start the year. And Vegas. Um, so they are at Kansas City to start the season. Home Raiders, at Dallas, home Buffalo, at Cincinnati. Um, after that, they do have the NFL's 14th easiest schedule to close the year and face just two teams expected to win 10 plus games. Um, so I, I do, I just think Lamar is good enough. Even with a bad offensive line or a young offensive line and I think they still have enough pieces on this defense that they can get something pretty good out of it um and I think that there is going to be some growth in guys like Zay Jones and uh some other pieces of this offense that um and Derrick Henry coming in I don't think he has to be amazing but I think he fits this team really interestingly so I do think Baltimore goes over 10 and a half um not a pick we're going to click on, but I, I that's just my prediction for these guys. Cincinnati, um, total is at 10.5. Uh, they are plus 160 to win the division and plus 700 to win the conference. Um, they are going to be missing a couple of guys. DJ Reader is gone and Ouzier also gone. Uh, over the last two years, the Bengals were the number one run defense in the league with Reader on the field. They were dead last in yards per carry allowed with Reader on off of the field. Now, they do have a pretty, a decently easy slate of quarterbacks 
that they will face this year, not in the division. Uh, Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, or Jacoby Brissett, um, Will Levis, Aiden O'Connell, or Gardner Minshew, um, and Bryce Young. So they do have a schedule that sets up really well. But I have major concerns about everything going on with the receiver contracts. I have major concerns with the Joe Burrow not throwing two days in a row thing. Um, so I'm going to go Cincinnati under 10.5 uh, win totals. And again, I'm going to look and see uh, they are plus 190 to miss the playoffs. Just something I'm writing down just in case. We're not circling it just yet. Cleveland is next. Uh, they are um, at eight and a half uh, there is their total, plus 525 to win the division. They changed quarterbacks 11 times last year, which is insane. Um, I, I think it was like five or six or seven actual quarterbacks, but the, the switches that they made, 11 times. Um, their defense was unbelievable. They uh, ranked first in non-sack EPA allowed last year, the best of any team since 2019, and the fifth best since 2000. Um, they are an incredible unit. They finished second in pressure rate and uh, sixth in sacks last year. Miles Garrett, unbelievable. 14 sacks, 18.3% pressure rate, which ranked fourth among uh, pass rushers. He, uh, according to ESPN, was second in their pass rush win metric last year. Um, so the defense, unbelievable. The offense, you have concerns. Nick Chubb is banged up. I do like Jerome Ford, as we've talked about in fantasy. Uh, Amari Cooper is there, and he is fine. Deshaun Watson, though, has looked cooked. He was um, 42nd out of 45 quarterbacks with at least 300 attempts over the last two years, 42nd in EPA per play, 36th in yards per attempt, and 38th in off-target rate. 17% of his throws were deemed off-target last year, try, uh, tied with Trevor Simeon for the worst among, uh, mark among quarterbacks with at least 150 uh, attempts. I just, don't, again, I don't think this offense is going to be good enough to get them to nine wins, so I'm going to go under eight and a half on the Cleveland Browns. Pittsburgh Steelers are next. Their total is at eight and a half. They are plus 550 to win this division. So here are the reasons why I don't think it's going to work. Um, they have the hardest projected schedule in the league and Russell Wilson is a bad quarterback. Here are the reasons why I think it might work. Arthur Smith is a better offensive coordinator than this team has had in the last like half decade, even though I'm not a huge fan of his. Um, and this defense is ridiculously good. They get a healthy TJ Watt, um, another year of development from Highsmith, and they added Patrick Queen, um, who I think is really going to help out this team defensively. I think that this is going to be a bit of a juggernaut of a defense. I think Pittsburgh goes over um, eight and a half, and I think there is a real chance that this Steelers team makes the playoffs in this upcoming season. We will get to playoff picks here in a little bit. On to the AFC South. Um, Houston, their total is at nine and a half. They are minus 120 to win the division, plus 500 to win the AFC. They played the easiest schedule of quarterbacks last season. They are projected to face the 10th hardest schedule of quarterbacks this year. The quarterbacks they beat last year, Kenny Pickett, Will Levis twice, Derek Carr, Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, Gardner Minshew, Baker Mayfield, and Joe Burrow. Um, I have concerns about this defense, and that is where I, I have a slight little hitch in my giddy up about picking the Texans to actually um that then actually like make their way. I I just I I feel like this defense is gonna hold this team back from being elite is what I am trying to say. And that is that's why I can't just fully go all in on the Houston Texans. Offensively, they were great. CJ Stroud was unbelievable. Youngest quarterback to win a playoff game in NFL history. Uh, most passing yards in a game by a rookie in NFL history. Most passes without an interception to start a career in NFL history. So I, I think the Houston Texans can be good. Um, can be quite good. I think they probably go over nine and a half, but I don't think this team wins the division. Um, I think they can get to 10 wins and still not win this division. I'll tell you why in a sec. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts, uh, their total is at eight and a half. I worry about, um, I worry about Anthony Richardson, um, and him as a quarterback just in general. Um, and, but the, the thing I really worry about is this team defensively, they were horrendous last year. 
Um, they will play the fifth hardest schedule in the league during the first 12 weeks of the season. It does kind of get easier as it goes on, but the easy games they play are late in the year and against cold weather teams, New England, New York, and Denver. They play on the road in those cities all late. Now, New England sucks, so they probably got to win in that game. Um, but I, I, I do I do think that this is still a growth year for this team. Um on non-blitzes, also offensive line-wise, Indy allowed pressure in two and a half seconds or less at the league's third worst rate. So I, I just think that the quarterback's a little unproven. The offensive line isn't very good and the defense sucks. I, I, I just, I have to think Indy takes um, another kind of step back this year. Wins-wise, I think that, there, that there's going to be some signs where it's like, okay, this is actually a team here. And I, I, I think that that is, um, I think that is going to be, it, it, like Chicago in the last one. They're going to go probably under their win total, but you're going to feel better about it, I think. Jacksonville, their total is at 8.5. They're plus 320 to win the division. Um, a reminder, going into last year, in week going into week 10, Trevor Lawrence had this team at 6-2. and two. They were the only team in the AFC South with a winning record. Out of 33 quarterbacks with 100 passing attempts, Lawrence's average time to throw was 2.3 seconds, fast, a second fastest in the NFL. Um, he had some issues with the offensive line, but he was also extremely good, I thought. And so I think that this is a team that probably takes some steps forward this year. I think Trevor Lawrence, fully healthy, can still be that game changer. Um, I think that Brian Thomas as a receiver has a chance to still be something, not still, has a chance to be something actually pretty special. I think ETN is a really talented running back. I think defensively with uh, Josh um, Hines Allen, that they have a a defense that can at least get after the quarterback here. They do face the projected second toughest schedule in the league over the first 13 weeks. Eight of 12 games are against teams that made the playoffs last year year. Um, and so I, I, I do think that this is a team that will start slow, but I do think Jacksonville comes out and I have Jacksonville winning this division. So plus 325 to win the division. And just quickly here, uh, what do we get for making the playoffs for Jacksonville plus 115? Probably not enough, uh, given some of the other investments we're making on this, but, uh, Jacksonville at, uh, over eight and a half is what we are going to do with this particular team. Uh, Tennessee, uh, their total sits at six and a half. They are plus 1,000 to win the division. I think that Tennessee is being really overlooked. Um, I have them as the undervalued team. They do face the sixth um, hardest projected schedule in the league. But, I do think that they made significant improvements on the defense. They spent a ton of money to get better defensively, which is an area they needed to. They have spent first round picks the last two years on the offensive line. And I think Will Levis is actually better than people think. I think that he had a dreadful offensive line last year and that really limited him. I think if that offensive line can improve, then this team is really going to do some things. Maybe not, like, I I don't think this is a team that makes the playoffs, but I do have Tennessee over 6.5 right now in the AFC South. Um, I, I think that Will Levis, he was the starter from weeks 8 to 15. Um, this team ran at a 53% rate. However, Will Levis actually was pretty good on... Um, uh, what is it here? On first down, he was number five in EPA per attempt. He was 11th in success rate and eighth in yards per attempt. With Derrick Henry off of the field, his EPA jumped uh, by like 7x. He had a 65% success rate and 13.3 yards per attempt compared to 7.4 with Derrick Henry on the field. Will Levis was a quarterback who liked to push the ball down the field. He just didn't have the time to, and this was on a run first offense. I think in a more balanced offense, I'm not saying Derrick Henry held this team back. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I think Will Levis, his stats and the eye test even a little bit skewed by what was going on there. I think he takes a pretty significant step forward this year. I don't think the Titans make the playoffs, but I do have them at over six and a half. And then we get to the AFC West, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. They are, uh, their total is at 11 and a half. Um, this is going to be a pretty quick divisional breakdown. Uh, they are minus 310 to win the division. They're going to win the division. And I, I have a bunch of stats here. Um, it doesn't matter. This team, um, uh, they are just so much better 
than everyone in the AFC West. They are such a talented football team. And I, I do think that because of all the weapons they have, not only offensively that Rasheed Rice is going to hang around, um, but defensively, this team turned themselves into one of the best defenses in the league last year. They are just better. So Kansas City over 11 and a half. We're not going to overthink it. The Raiders, uh, their total is at six and a half. They're plus 900 to win the division. The offense was very conservative last year. They were in the back third of the league in basically every offensive category. The way they won was by not turning the ball over. Um, and so I, I think that their offense, they're intriguing a little bit because of some of the weapons they have. If Garner Minshew can just get the ball to Adams, get the ball to Myers, you can start to see some things. I am very curious as to how they use Brock Bowers. If there is some creativity on this offense, then this is a team that can, I think, utilize this kid greatly. And I think they can really grow. I just don't know about... Um, uh, about Coach Pierce, and I just don't know about this offense. I, I think that it is going to become very predictable, and it's just not an overly talented team. Um, so I, I can't go over six and a half on the Raiders. I, I am going to go under 6.5. For the Denver Broncos, uh, a lot of their defensive stats are skewed because Miami kicked the shit out of them in, uh, I think it was week seven last year. Even still, the defense wasn't all that good. Um, but they are projected to face the fourth easiest schedule of offenses. Um, so that's helpful, I, I think, for this team. Offensively, I am not a Bo Nix fan. I think Sean Payton's a little under or overrated because he had Drew Brees as his quarterback for such a long time. And... So I, I think that this is just quite a bad football team. We are going to go under 6.5 on the Denver Broncos. And finally, the LA Chargers. Their total is at 6.5. Um, this is an easy over for me. They have the second easiest projected schedule in the NFL. They face the sixth easiest projected run schedule, uh, schedule of run defenses in the NFL. They're projected to be a run-heavy team. Um, they do have rest disadvantages in the back part of the year, but they have a significant upgrade of coach in Jim Harbaugh over, um, Staley. And I, I just think that maybe we are overlooking, um, how good Justin Herbert is. And I get, he doesn't have the weapons to throw to, but this was a crazy stat, um, from Warren Sharp. In looking back at the last two years combined, out of 34 possible games, there were only six where both Mike Williams and Keenan Allen were played healthy. Weeks 14 to 17 of 2022, weeks one and two of 2023. Six games out of 34, that's 17%. So these guys, this he was already playing without those guys basically anyway. And I get you already had, you had one of them on the field. It wasn't just a complete loss. But th this team wasn't winning um, off of any of that anyway. And so I, I just think that with some improvements in coaching... Uh, maybe some improvements in philosophy that this is going to be a team that takes a step forward and the rest of the division is just bad. So uh, aside from the, the Chiefs. So I'm going to go Chargers over at 6.5. So now we get into the postseason. And so again, I'm making my bracket here really quickly. Uh, three will face six, four will face five, which means we have a one seed here. They will face that team, and then we have others, and then we have this one, and then Super Bowl. Okay, our one seed this year. Um, I kind of just have to go Kansas City. Everyone else, there's too many question marks in the division that concern me. But actually, you know what? No, we're gonna go Kansas City. We're, we're not gonna we're not gonna overthink this one. Uh, Baltimore will be our two seed. Absolutely. Uh, we will have Miami as our three seed. And we will have Jacksonville as our four seed. We will have Houston as our five seed. Uh, so the AFC South gets a couple of playoff teams. Um, again, I want to have Buffalo and the Jets maybe missing the playoffs. Um, I just don't think I can put them behind the AFC North teams. Like I think Pittsburgh has a decent chance of making the playoffs. Um, but I, I will go Buffalo as the seven seed and the Jets as the six seed out in Miami. Um, so that will mean that Baltimore will beat Buffalo in their AFC wildcard game. Uh, I, I do think that 
the Dolphins will get the job done at home against the New York Jets, so they will be the three seed, and I will have Houston beating Jacksonville as my upset in the first round in the AFC side of things, which means it'll be Kansas City against Houston, that one goes to to, to Kansas City, Uh, Baltimore against Miami, I will have um, Miami winning that one and going to the AFC title game, where they will lose to Kansas City, and so now, my Super Bowl prediction is Kansas City against Green Bay, and I will go for the third year in a row with the Kansas City Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. That concludes a near-month-long process of previewing the National Football League. Let's get to the games. It's going to be a whole lot of fun, and we got a ton of coverage coming up here on Couch Potato Diary for the NFL season, and we have some major plans starting hopefully next week um, here on this channel and on all my other ones. Um, a, a lot of really fun stuff planned. So uh, make sure you subscribe um, if you are watching on YouTube. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you are listening. Um, a podcast form, make sure you subscribe there. Leave a review. If you're watching here, like the video. And I will talk to all of you later. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.